Brilliant, thanks. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, it's lovely to be here. Um, so, as mentioned, I'm Bernard from the Design Council. Um, we're the UK's National Strategic Advisor on Design, uh, initially founded in 1944 uh, by the government then to support the design sector to drive post-war recovery. Uh, and today, our focus is still very much on harnessing design to address some of the biggest challenges of our time. And last year, we launched our Design for Planet mission, which aims to galvanize and support the design sector to tackle the climate and biodiversity emergency. But today, what I'd like to talk to you about is our design economy research program, and really to build on what Anna was saying, to kind of share a bit of our experience uh, on mapping and understanding the design economy in the UK to inform national policy. So about as long as there's been a design council in the UK, we've been undertaking research to understand primarily the economic value of design uh, and the role that design plays in business. And this is actually our third iteration of the research program, which is, was launched in 2021 and is going to run until 2024. And we've decided to take a bit of a different approach this time around. And so I just wanted to share three key differences um, in our approach for this iteration. So the first, building on some of the comments of the previous speakers, is that we can't simply exclusively focus on economic growth. And so for the first time, we're going to be mapping not only the economic impact of design, uh, but also its social and environmental potential. The second thing is we've really tried from the outset of this research to think about how we can treat and develop evidence as a service. So rather than simply publishing all of our research at the end in a static report, um, we've been making all of our methodologies, our frameworks, and crucially also all of our data open source and publicly available as we go on through this research process for others to use and engage with. And thirdly, building again on Anna's point, really trying to make sure that throughout this research journey, we're engaging policymakers, stakeholders, and actors from across the design economy as we go. And so in parallel to this research that I'm going to share, we've been running roundtables, engaging leaders uh, across government and industry to help shape and also advocate for the findings. So what I'm going to do today is share five key insights from our latest report in the Design Economy Research Program, which really focuses on the people, the places, and the economic value of design in the UK. Um, but before I jump in, I also just want to quickly clarify what we mean when we talk about a design economy. So, of course, design spans multiple sectors and disciplines. It includes things like product designers, architects, fashion designers, and also more emergent forms such as um, UX designers and policy designers. And when we go to try and gather this data to make visible the value of design, we look at kind of two key criteria. One is we look at design studios and firms, so what we might call design industries. But we also consider the significant economic impact that designers working in other parts of the economy bring as well. So really interestingly, about 77% um, of designers in the UK work in other firms, such as digital designers in the NHS, in education, or in finance as well. And so for us, that's a key thing to make visible um, the role that design plays in other firms and other parts of the economy. So our first key insight, which I think will probably be common knowledge to many of you, is that design is and continues to be an economic growth engine. It gives us an immense capability in the UK, which we need to make sure we're harnessing not only for economic prosperity, uh, but also social and environmental benefits. So to share the latest data that we have available, um, in 2019, the design economy contributed 97.4 billion in GVA to the UK economy. That's around, us, I think, roughly about 114 billion euros. And interestingly, the design economy grew at twice the rate of the UK economy in the decade running up to that. So 73% uh, compared to 36% in the UK economy as a whole. And it represents a really significant chunk of the UK workforce. So around one in 20 people in the UK working population work in some way in the design economy, including 1.62 million designers. So imagine what that group of people could achieve and do in a country. And also really interestingly, what our data has shown us is that design has shown quite a lot of resilience uh, in, in the midst of COVID-19. So in 2020, that employment number grew by about 4%, um, whereas the rest of the UK economy saw a contraction uh, in employment as well. So again, I think just testament uh, to design's resilience in the face of really significant socio-environmental challenges. 
Whilst we do a lot of work with national policy uh, at the Design Council, it's really important that we're also supporting local governments uh, and devolved governments as well to shape more local and place-based policy agendas. And it was really interesting to look that in recent years, we've seen significant growth in the UK outside of London, which is and continues to be a real concentration area of uh, design capability in the UK. So 33% growth in Scotland, which is around five times the size uh, or growth rate rather of the Scottish economy as a whole. So again, what we can see is opportunity areas where we can learn from particular regions and parts of the UK that are obviously doing something right and supporting their design economies. So that's a little bit about professional designers, but we know that design skills are vital across our entire economy. They're used by communities, by public sector servants, um, across the whole spectrum of industries. And our research has also tried to capture that value. And what we see, unsurprisingly, is that design skills bring significant wider value uh, to business and communities. So one of the things that we did in our research was we mapped jobs and occupations where we saw a high concentration uh, of design skilled activity in that work, things like creative problem solving, the use of design tools and methods. And to give you a sense of what kinds of jobs those are, those are things like civil engineering, electronics, manufacturing. And what we found is that around one in seven workers in the UK rely in some way on design skills. Together they generate with the design economy around 14% of UK GDP. So for me, that is a real um, kind of striking statistic for policymakers. It really reiterates the importance of design education across the entire economy and as a foundation point for any uh, solid general education uh, that young people are undertaking. And what about the use of design and design skills in businesses right now? So what we've seen is that since our last design economy report in 2018, more businesses in the UK are using design. However, it's still the case that 32% of businesses do not use design at all. And that's really important because the same research um, that led to this statistic found that there is a positive correlation between use of design and being net zero ready in a business and also being confident of long-term business growth and resilience as well. So really here the challenge is how can we get more businesses to use design for social, environmental and economic good. So my third point is that design can create flourishing places. And one of the key things that we've done in our last report is really try to map um, where clusters of design activity are happening across the UK. And what we can find is that there are concentrated centers of design excellence across the country that both represent you know, historical and uh, local traditions. Uh, for example, the Wedgwood Potteries, which are the craft bit on the map uh, right in the middle. Um, to more emerging sectors and areas such as the video games uh, kind of clusters that we're seeing uh, in Dundee in the north of Scotland. And for us, really interesting is what we found is that where you have concentrations of design activity, particularly in things like architecture or product industrial design or digital, you tend to also find higher wages and business growth in those areas as well. So the spillover benefits of design are huge. And we can also see that in the use of good design to shape and develop places. So this is a, a picture of a northern seaside town in the north of England um, called Amble. It was a town that had experienced um, rising levels of unemployment due to decline in its then fishing industries. And what we did at Design Council was we worked with the local authority and the local community to take a design-led approach to regenerating the area. What we did is we identified the existing assets, skills, and capabilities uh, in the local community. And as a result of that, we um, help to design what you can see here are these kind of sheds, which are micro studios and shops to support local businesses. And as a result of that design intervention, uh, the town has now been able to attract around eight million pounds in further investment, uh, secure planning for a hotel and 400 new homes as well. So really, I think taking a place-based approach uh, to policy design and design for uh, policy is really crucial. So I just want to end now with uh, two risks that we are seeing at the moment in the UK's design sector. And the first one is that design continues to face a diversity challenge and very much the workforce does not reflect uh, the society uh, that it shapes. So what we found is that designers in the UK tend to overwhelmingly identify as male. Only 23% of designers in the UK identify as female, which is grossly unrepresentative of the UK population. And whilst when we look at the design economy as a whole, it is generally representative of the population in terms of representation around ethnicity and disability, there is huge variation across different design sectors, 
and disciplines, and also as you go and look at higher levels of seniority. So we think there's a really urgent need for the design sector and government to work together to address this inequality within the sector to ensure that the design that we're producing in the country benefits everyone as well. And my last one feels uh, quite apt for being here. So design is one of the UK's major exports. Uh, as Anna shared, it's responsible for around one in every 10 pounds generated by UK exports. It's around sort of 70 billion pounds uh, a year. But what we're seeing is that design firms are struggling with their exports um, since the UK's exit um, from the EU. So to share a couple statistics, what we found is that service exports, which is the main kind of export uh, that designers in the UK deliver, um, that's things like architects working in designing buildings internationally, have really declined in key sectors uh, since 2017. So product industrial design, for example, has seen an 85% drop in uh, exports since 2017. Architecture in the built environment, 26%. So this really, I think, highlights the importance for the UK in ensuring that we have the right trade agreements, immigration routes, and also promotion policies and strategies in place to ensure the resilience of our UK design economy. So that's a little bit of an insight into some of the data that we collect uh, and, and we use at Design Council. What we're in the process of doing at the moment is we're actually um, just about to publish a policy position paper based on uh, some of this data, and also about to start our next phase of research using a design value framework that we've developed earlier this year to start to map the wider social and environmental impact that design has across the country. What I'd like to end with, though, I think is a bit of a provocation that is guiding all of our research and one that I'd love to share with you, which is how can we galvanize you know, that incredible strength of that design community to create flourishing places, empower communities, and regenerate the planet? Right, I'll leave it there. Thank you.